Hello audience. Greetings of the day. We explore the conducted immunity test known as a bulk current injection, BCI, test, according to ISO 11452 to 4 specification. This immunity test is carried out by inducing disturbance signals into the wiring harness by means of a current injection probe, as shown in figure. The injection probe is a current transformer through which the wiring harness, which forms the secondary winding, of the device under test, DUT, is passed. Immunity tests are carried out by varying the test severity level and frequency, 1 MHz to 400 MHz, of the induced disturbance. The disturbance is an amplitude modulated, AM, narrowband, continuous wave, CW carrier signal. The ISO 11452-4 standard specifies two BCI test methods. 1. The substitution probe method also known as open loop probe method. 2. Current monitoring probe method also known as closed loop probe methods. Both test methods consist of two phases. First is calibration, using a calibration fixture and second is testing, using the device under test. Now let us see how we can perform the bulk current injection test on various devices. First, we will perform calibration method with calibration fixture and equipment. The calibration fixture, used in both methods, is shown in figure. During the calibration procedure, same for both methods, the injection probe is mounted inside the calibration fixture. The calibration fixture is terminated by a 50 ohm load at one terminal and connected to the spectrum analyzer through an attenuator, to protect the measuring equipment, at the other terminal, as shown in figure. During the calibration procedure we need to measure forward power supplied to the injection probe, mounted in the calibration fixture, and the power reflected from it reverse power. This is accomplished with the help of a directional coupler shown in figure. The coupler is rated for specific power handling, frequency range, and attenuation. Ports J3 and J4 sample the power and attenuate it before the power sensors can read it. The coupler shown is rated for 100 watt, 0.1 to 1000 megahertz, 40 decibels. The 50 omega load and a 20 decibels attenuator are shown in figure. The calibration procedure, and the bulk current injection test, is performed in a shielded enclosure, using several additional pieces of equipment shown in figure. The block diagram of the test equipment configuration, outside the shielding enclosure, is shown in figure. So now, we were familiar with the requirement of calibration equipment. Let us discuss about the calibration procedure. The calibration procedure, same for both methods, is performed with an unmodulated sinusoidal RF signal. During the calibration procedure, net power, forward power minus reverse power, is injected into the current probe creating the required current level in the calibration fixture over the required frequency range, 1 to 400 MHz. The level of forward power used during the calibration is later used during the actual testing. BCI test severity levels, required current levels, are specified in table. For bulk current injection calibration process limits are predefined as per standard ISO 11452. These limits are displayed in figure. For bulk current injection probes tastings. Amplitude modulated signal contributing major factors while testing. So let us have an overview on that. During the testing, in both methods, the amplitude modulated signal is used with a carrier frequency, varied from 1 to 400 MHz. Let us briefly discuss the modulation process. The unmodulated signal is a sinusoid shown in figure. The modulating signal, shown in figure, is also a sinusoid of an angular frequency theta, corresponding to the linear, cyclic, frequency of 1 kHz. 
The amplitude of this sinusoid is controlled by the modulation index, m, where, 0 less than or equal to m less than or equal to 1. For peak test level conservation, the peak amplitudes of the unmodulated and amplitude modulated signals are made equal. That is, the peak amplitude, of the unmodulated signal is reduced to a new level of amplitude, so when the modulating signal, m of t, is added to the reduced amplitude unmodulated signal, the resulting amplitude modulating signal has the same peak amplitude as the original unmodulated signal. The peak conservation is achieved with m equals 0.8. This amplitude modulation used in conducted immunity testing is often referred as amplitude 1 kHz with 80% modulation. The reduction in the peak amplitude of the original unmodulated signal can be also described in terms of the mean power. Thus, to adjust the amplitude of the carrier wave prior to modulation, the power is decreased by 5.1 dB and then amplitude modulating signal is added. So, until now we discussed about the calibration method used in conducted immunity tests. Now we will discuss about the substitution method. The test configuration for the substitution method is shown in figure. Note that the injection probe is placed at three different locations, 150 mm, 450 mm, and 750 mm from the device under tests, DUT. For a DIT remotely grounded, vehicle power return line longer than 200 mm, two line impedance stabilization networks, LISNs, are used. The test is conducted by injecting the forward power into the current probe clamped over the harness connected to the DIT. This was the same forward power we recorded during the calibration procedure. The forward power is incrementally increased until the level used in calibration, that produce the required current, is reached. Note that the calibrated level of the forward power corresponded to the load of 50 omega. The load impedance during the testing varies and could be smaller or larger than 50 omega. Thus, the forward power used during the testing may induce larger or smaller currents in the harness than the forward power induced during the calibration. Now we will discuss the process for the closed loop method for bulk current injection testing with power limitations. The test configuration for the closed loop method with power limitation is shown in figure. Note that this method uses two current probes one for injection, the same as in the substitution method, and the other for current measurements for monitoring purpose. The injection probe is placed 900 mm from the device under test while the measurement probe is placed 50 mm from the device under test. During testing, the power level recorded during the calibration is applied to the injection probe. The forward power is incrementally increased until the level used in calibration, that produce the required current in the 50 omega fixture, is reached. Current level in the wiring harness is measured using the measurement probe. If this measured current is below the level specified in the standard, we explained earlier, the power to the injection probe is increased until the specified current level is achieved or the power limit is reached. Now we are well versed with the measurement procedures for bulk current injection testing. We will proceed with the illustrative test results for better understand. Figure shows the passing test result for a device under test which was tested to the severity level 4, using the substitution method. The current curve writing on the level 4 curve shows that there were no anomalies when the current reached the severity level 4. To be more precise, there were no anomalies when the forward power applied during testing reached the level used during the calibration. The actual current in the harness during the testing is not known, unless an optional current measuring probe is used. Figure shows the test result with anomalies for a device under test which was tested to the severity level 4, using the substitution method. The dip in the current curve indicates an anomaly. When anomaly occurs at a given frequency, the power level is incrementally reduced until the anomaly is no longer present. 
Then the power level is incrementally increased until the anomaly occurs. At that time, the anomaly is marked on the plot. You can see orange dots in figure. Subsequently the frequency is stepped up to the next value and the power is incrementally increased until the required power level is reached or another anomaly is observed. Figure shows the test result when a DIT was tested using the closed loop method with power limitation. Please note that test limits in this plot do not correspond to the ISO 11452-4 specification. We used it for the illustration purposes only. Notice that up to a frequency of 10 MHz the induced current did not reach the required level, even though the maximum power, maximum power equal to 4 times the calibration power was applied. Based on the test procedures and results, anomalies are categorized as belonging to one of several classes. ISO 11452-1 defines theses classes as follows. 1. Class A, all functions of a device under test perform as designed during and after exposure to a disturbance. 2. Class B, all function of a device under test perform as designed during exposure, however, one or more of them can go beyond a specified tolerance. 3. All functions return automatically to within normal limits after exposure is removed, memory functions belong class A. 4. Class C, one or more functions of a device under test do not perform as designed during exposure but return automatically to normal operation after exposure is removed. 5. Class D. One or more functions of a device under test do not perform as designed during exposure and did not return to the normal operation until exposure is removed and the device under test is reset by a simple operator action. 6. Class E. One or more functions of a device under test do not perform as designed during and after exposure and cannot be returned to proper operation without repairing or replacing the device under test. Based on the device under test intended function, with respect to the conducted immunity, the device under test is usually also classified, by the manufacturer, as belonging to one of the test groups. These test groups reflect the severity of the device under test malfunction on the safety or functionality of other systems. During the immunity testing, each test group must meet a set of minimum requirements defined by the functional status classification above. Hope that this will help you better to understand the bulk current injection test methods and find out the solutions. We Croydon Services Private Limited will provide you the complete testing solutions for pre-compliance and compliance activities. You can connect us on info at Thank you.